As I presiding pastor has read for us, today's message comes from Zechariah chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. But especially verse 7, which says, What are you, a great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain. In our walk of life, there are just so many mountains that will block our ways. Such mountains are worries, anxieties, in marriages, between parents and children, in our businesses, our relatives, and our friends. Good friends begin partnership with the same mind and same purpose. But in a matter of few months or years, a little misunderstanding and distrust will become a huge mountain in their relationship, turning the lifetime friends into enemies overnight. We see this happen all the time. What are you, O oh great mountain? Even if we are facing such dilemmas to this day, I hope that you will listen to today's message carefully so that you realize all of those mountains are nothing. So you can also command, O oh great mountain, and put your name in the front in place of name Zerubbabel and say, before me, you will become a plain. God sent so many prophets to the Israelites. On Mount Sinai, Moses did not eat, did not drink for 40 days. He was completely fasting and he and amid of amid this god cut the stone tablets and wrote on it with his own fingers and gave them to moses it was the 10 commandments and many ordinances and statutes but first it was about the land the land was to be cultivated and farmed for 6 years but in the seventh year, even if the land cannot speak, God says the land sees everything and reports everything to me. So the land becomes weary, so let the land rest on the seventh year, which is a sabbatical year. If you're talking about a small lot in your backyard, it may not mean much to you. But for those farmers with many, many acres of land, If what would happen to them if they don't farm for the whole year when they own so many acres of land? They could lose thousands and hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars. That's why people complain to Moses. Do you mean that we have to starve in the ninth year? So Moses prayed to God and God replied, Okay. In the sixth year, I will give you enough food to feed you for three years. So I will give you this great harvest, enough to feed you for three years. So when they really believed it and followed God's word, it really happened. However, man's greed is endless. That's why in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 says, greed amounts to idolatry. Also, Book of James said the greed and lust gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished or when sin grows, it brings forth death. People still did not obey. O 
O land, if you speak to God's ears, but how come you don't speak to me? I am the owner of this land. That's what they said. They mocked God's word. They belittled and despised God's word. That's what the scripture says, that they ultimately disobeyed. Secondly, when they put people to labor, or like you own a slave, God tell them that let them work for you for six years, but in the seventh year, ask them what they want. If they want, let them go for free. Let them go free for one year. They can take a break for one year. But if the master says to leave, but the slave says, Sir, I have nowhere else to go. I won't be able to eat or sleep if I leave. So please don't tell me to rest for one year. I'd rather stay at your place. If the master hears this from his slave, then the master will take an awl and pierce it through his ear into the door. So it's like earrings today. So this is a mark. Why? It was to prevent people from talking bad about the master. People might say, oh, he does not let his slave go, on, go free on the seventh year. So the third person can sin by talking bad about them. And so to prevent this, um, they would um, drill a hole in their ears of the ears of the slave to make it as a mark. God gave everything. God gave us all ten. But he says, you can use nine of the ten on however you want it, but just use that one, that remaining one, for my kingdom, for my enterprise, until you go to heaven. But they stole all of that. Where was thanksgiving? When they gave offerings to God, they were all lame, spotted, blemished, flawed. You know, imperfect offerings, well, offerings with defects, like for the bulls or sheep or doves, they will cost less than one-fourth of the unblemished perfect offerings. So they bought it cheap, and they cared less if it was spotted or blemished somewhere. Of course, people cannot tell, but God is watching everything. All the offerings were sick, blind, blemished skin infections, and they bought it at one-fourth of the normal cost. But God is living God, so would God be fine with this? would be put up with this it came to a point that God said in Malachi try taking them to your own king or to your own governor will they be happy to accept them how far more would I the Lord of the host the living God who knows everything would I accept them Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 30 through 38 in so much tears, he received the revelation and sent the message to the king through his disciple Baruch. But the king cursed him madly. And he um, called in fire to be brought. And then he burned the scroll that was written with the prophecy for the future of Israel. He burnt the scroll not just once or twice. Arrest Jeremiah and throw him into a deep cistern. But God is alive. The scripture says that so fortunately it happens to be a time of drought that there was no water in that cistern. Normal people would be crying out to save them but Jeremiah trusted God and slept so peacefully, snoring away. Then God's revelation came again. So he made Baruch write it all down again to be sent to the palace. They were ripped apart again. Dear king, please listen to me. Zedekiah became king when he was 21 years old. 
When he was 21 years old, he became king. When did he die? At what age? For 11 years, he ruled as king. But for the first one and a half years, the Babylonians came and besieged the city more than one year. So the city ran out of food, ran out of water. All the living essentials were no longer available. So they reached to a point that the people said, let's eat your child today and tomorrow you can eat mine. So Jeremiah said, dear king, please listen to this last revelation that I've received. If you don't obey this, then your eyes will be gouged out. And before your eyes are gouged out, you are going to have to watch your own two sons beheaded. You will have to watch all that tragedy. All your royal people and officers and nobles will be killed in your sight. And in the end, your eyes will be gouged out. And then you will be chained and taken to Babylon so tragically. And until you die, you will not see your throne. Ezekiel also prophesied this in Ezekiel chapter 12. And every single word in the scriptures came true. Disciples asked Jesus, when will the world come to an end? Jesus replied in Luke chapter 17, chapter 20, Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13. He explained how the world will come to an end in such detail. However, those with devout faith, those who live with the righteousness and justice will escape. So always be on the alert and pray so that you can stand before the Son of Man. During Noah's time, who among the entire human race believed that the flood of God's judgment was coming. Who believed? Would God really be that mighty to drown the whole earth in water? Noah, you're such a fool. If you want to believe in God, please do it right. How can you be so insane and cause such a chaos among people? They have to cut woods down in the hills to build the ark. And whenever they have leftover time, we see in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, says that he preached the word. He did this for nearly 100 years. The Lord said that the coming of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah. What I am preaching now comes from 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 12 and below, and Jeremiah chapter 27, and chapter 17, and Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 54, Second Kings chapter 25, verse 1 through 7, Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 34, Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 10 through 12, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1 through 10, Jeremiah chapter 52, verse 1 through 16. Everything is written down in much detail what age he became king, how the siege lasted one and a half years, and what age he died. In 1990, in July, Nostradamus prophesied, but it was a misfire. It did not happen. But God's word will never misfire. They all came true so precisely. Just as God said, King of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar died. God reversed everything at once. Persian King Cyrus. God endowed Cyrus with his grace and loving kindness. The former kings invaded Jerusalem, massacred people, women, and the babies. 
and stole all the articles from the temple of God and brought them to the shrine of Babylonian gods and these demons and goblins. But this King Cyrus declared to send them all back to Jerusalem. It is enough to enslave the Israelites for 70 years like this. By the king's power, he sent a decree to send them all back. And he pronounced a decree to the entire country so they were all free to go. God blessed Cyrus so much that he said, God is a true God, so go and build his house. That's what he said. As a result came the Israelites' first return to their home country and the second return to Jerusalem. How many? 42,360. This is written in Ezra chapter 2, verse 64. 42,360 people went and they saw that everything was in ruins, in utter desolation. Egypt and Samaria had trampled upon it and abused the land so freely because nobody was there. The temple was in such a terrible condition, the land laid in desolation. The temple was in such an awful condition that it leaked when it rained. This could no longer be called the house of God. It was not a house for God to dwell. And so it was so worrisome. Those people who made much money would never return from Babylon. They did not want to leave Babylon. So through the prophet Haggai, God said, silver is mine and gold is mine too. Build my house first. Then I will bless all your descendants for generations to come. But why can't you believe this and only obsess over your own husband, your own wife, and your children? God pointed all of this out through Haggai and through Ezra and through Ezekiel and through Jeremiah. Isaiah chapter 48, 35. Ezra chapter 1, verse 2 and below. They were just so weary and anxious of building God's house that they could only let out deep sighs because it was just so overwhelming for them. But through King Cyrus, God commanded to build his house and said, don't worry about money. I will open my national treasury to provide all the necessary funds to build the house of God. And if anyone hinders building the temple, then he will be hung and his household will be completely ruined. And God said all these through prophet Ezra. And it was such great joy. Anyone who complained about building the temple or hindered the work, hang him immediately and set his house on fire. And this was king's order. What greater love of God is there than this? They were captives for 70 years in Babylon and they returned completely empty-handed, completely poor. But look, God knows our situation so well. He's so well aware of what kind of state we are in, our minds and our lives. Human counsels are nullified in a day. They don't last. This is written in Psalm 33. So there was a decree saying that return all the articles that were taken from the temple back to Jerusalem. This is Ezra chapter 1 verse 8. What a precious word this is. From Ezra chapter 6, 1 through verse 10, look at verse 4. This is in Ezra chapter 6 verse 4. 
from verse 1 through 10. How precious is this message. So the nation provided everything needed from the national and royal treasuries until the temple was finished. That's how they returned to Jerusalem. And on the second year, the second month, this inspiring temple reconstruction began. The Israelites had lived in such suffocating lives and could not even breathe freely before the Babylonians. But although he was a Gentile king, Cyrus sent back the people, helped them to build the temple of God, and this Gentile king said with his own lips that the God of Israel is the maker of heaven and earth. So all the elderlies of the Israelites were so happy and so overjoyed that they sobbed and they wept. They were not hiding in their own rooms while they were weeping. They no longer cared whether the Babylonians were watching them or not. They cried out these loud shouts because they were so filled with joy and thanksgiving. They're weeping. They're praising. The scriptures said that they were crying out so loud that people couldn't differentiate if the sounds were a shout of joy or the sound of weeping. This is in Ezra chapter 3, verse 11 through 13, written so precisely, Ezra chapter 3. But an unexpected thing happened to the man of God, the prophet Ezra, uh, prophet Zechariah. God gave a revelation of a great mountain. Oh, great mountain, those who do not trust God, who do not believe in God, who are proud and arrogant, who wield their power, abuse their power, all of these are called great mountains. In today's text, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 7 says, What are you, O great mountain? The temple construction stopped. It halted. This was because of the adversary of Judah and Benjamin, the Samaritans. This is written in Ezra chapter 4. They hired counselors against them to frustrate their counsel. They hired counsel and consultants for discussions as their advisors those people who are very knowledgeable. So Samaritans pay them a lot. And these councils would write a letter against Jerusalem to the king. They wrote a petition letter. So this uh, petition or the accusations came in. So king said, stop building the temple until this matter is resolved. So what were these accusations in the petition? They said, oh, king, watch out, the Israelites. They build the city wall. They repair the temple and houses. Do you know why they do this? Because this is to betray your mercy, to despise and mock your throne, and ultimately to overthrow your kingdom. Of course, the king would be shocked at such accusation and petition, right? So God, once again, endow the king of Persia with his grace and gave an opportunity. The king could have said, don't build the temple, period. However, instead, this king looked into how his father king had released the Israelites. He examined all the old records. For how many years? For 15 years, don't be shocked. 
They began building the temple but had to halt the construction for 15 years because he received because because when he received this petition letter and this evil report